Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 18th, 2018. Now, there, for this segment, I am going to put some global warming figures into context for you. And I'm what I'm using is NASA temperature summaries for the first six months of the past four years. And what NASA has found is that all of the past four years have been a one of the top four hottest years in the climate record which began in 1880. So for example 2015 came in as the fourth hottest January to June period at 0 0.82 degrees Celsius above the 1951 to 1980 average, which is a mid 20th century range that NASA uses. 2016 came in as the, the hottest January to June period. 2017 subsequently came in as the second hottest. And 2018 this year came in as the third hottest. Now, warming is, you know, something that you look at in the context of long-term trends. And ever since the 1880s, global temperatures have been rising with recent, <coughs> excuse me, recent records set decade after decade for, for warmest years. But when you're looking at a potential for serious and, and, and a, a, a marked increase, in global temperatures in, in the form of a, a step change, what you want to look at is clusters of, of warmest years on record. And, and that's what we're experiencing now, at least for the first six month period. Now I'm gonna look at a graphic of composite temperatures across the globe in an anomaly range graphic so this is based on degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you see white, that's about average. If you see anything shifting from yellow to red, that's above average. And the top of the chart here is four degrees Fahrenheit or more in the red range, with the bottom of the chart being up below four degrees Fahrenheit or more below average in the dark blue range. And as you can see, there's, there's none of that on the map, but there's quite a bit of dark red which is four degrees Fahrenheit or more above normal, showing up in the global composite for the first six months of 2018. So this is a very hot map. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of warming around the pole. And that's a signature, a climate change related signature of what we call polar amplification, where the poles tend to warm faster than the lower latitudes and middle latitudes. And since the first six months of 2018 included northern hemisphere winter we would expect to see this signal because polar amplification shows up strongest for the poles in the winter time it's also notable that that this included the period of austral summer and and despite that antarctica was still showing above normal ranges although not quite the spike that you see in the arctic now, we also note that there's been quite a bit of warming in through Asia and Europe and the Middle East and the Western portions of North America and also over parts of the Amazon and into Africa here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to, to pull up NASA GISS because I, I want to show you the overall global temperature trend for the period since the 1880s. And, and that gives you a good idea of the, the global warming that we are seeing overall over the multi-decade time scale. And here we go. So, so this is the present NASA graph. And as you can see, temperatures in the 1880s and the early 20th century were somewhat flat there was there was no marked rise in global atmospheric temperatures from the 1880s 
through the 1930s, but then we began to see atmospheric temperatures rise as atmospheric greenhouse gases skyrocketed following the, the mass burning of fossil fuels primarily. And the present four-year time period here is a large outlier from the global trend in which we see a, a very rapid temperature spike, which is a, a long and swift elevation of global temperatures in the graph. Now, going back to these composite images provided by NASA, these composite global temperature anomaly images, I just want to say that for 2018, we can expect a potential for, for increased warming through the end of the year because NOAA is predicting an El Nino event to, to begin to settle in to the equatorial Pacific zones. And this El Nino event is, is on the warm side of natural variability. And when you overlay warm natural variability with the greater forcing caused by increasing greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere, you tend to get a warmer temperature spike. And so we should tend to see 2019, late 2018, 2019 temperatures start to challenge those set in 2016 if an El Nino does occur as predicted. Now, I just want to put some of these temperature anomalies in context with the 1880s average. And in this first six months, the warmest period in 2016 is comparable to 1.32 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages. Now, that's because the 1951 to 1980 mean in the NASA measure is already a little bit, is already a bit warmer than, than 1880s averages. And so if you're looking at total global warming based on the pre-industrial or near pre-industrial context, you need to add about 0.22 degrees Celsius to this 1951 to 1980 mean. And that's what we're looking at now. If you're looking at global averages, 2016 was about 1.22 degrees Celsius warmer than the 1880s averages. And, and that was the peak year. That's the warmest year on record. And, and unfortunately, we're going to be looking at, at potentially challenging that record soon. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.